20th, the officers of the 53rd Regiment had done me the honor to elect me an honorary member of their mess. And on the departure of that regiment from the island, the officers of the 66th Regiment had conferred a similar honor upon me. Sir Hudson Lowe employed Sir Thomas Reed to fill the mind of Lieutenant Colonel Lascelles, the commanding officer with the most insidious calumnies against me, in consequence of which Lieutenant Reardon of the regiment, a friend of mine, to whom he related that it had been insinuated to him by Sir Thomas Reed that I had become displeasing to the sight of the governor, that the officers of the regiment ought to expel me from their mess as a person who had submitted to insults from the governor who had turned me out of his house and consequently that I was unfit for their society, insinuating also that my expulsion would be very agreeable to Sir Hudson Lowe, who he observed had said that he should consider any person who was seen to associate with me as his personal enemy. Lieutenant Colonel Lascelles concluded with begging of Lieutenant Reardon to persuade me to withdraw privately from the mess, as my presence there was obnoxious to the governor, protesting, however, that personally he had a great esteem for me and that he would be one of the first to invite me to dine there as a guest. Reflecting that if I slunk away secretly, opportunity would be furnished to my enemies to paint me in the blackest colors and to represent that my conduct had been such as to compel the officers of the 66 to turn me out of the mess and being conscious of upright intentions, I immediately wrote to Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Lascelles the letter in the appendix marked number. 18. In the evening, I met him coming to see me. He made many professions of friendship and esteem for me, but said that the governor was displeased with me, and he begged I would withdraw privately from the mess, that Sir Hudson Lowe desired it, and that he was afraid of his resentment being exercised upon himself and upon the officers of the regiment if I did not comply with his wishes. He concluded by stating that Sir Thomas Reed had shown him part of my correspondence with the governor and some secret documents which had never been communicated to me and professing his esteem in which sentiment he said, he knew he was joined by every officer in the regiment. I replied, they clandestine misrepresentations from their being unknown to me might remain unrefuted, that no person was secure from the breath of calumny, that, however, I was ready to submit the whole of the correspondence between the governor and myself to the judgment of the officers of the regiment or to submit to any other scrutiny that he or they might desire and to abide by their decision, but that I never would renounce the honor which the officers of the 66 had conferred upon me and granting me a seat at their table, unless according to the custom of the army, by a vote of the mess or by an order from the governor. This reply was communicated to Sir Hudson Lowe, who, probably having his own reasons for not allowing the correspondence to be submitted to the judgment of the Corps of Officers, sent an order by Brigadier General Sir George Bingham, as I have been informed, to Lieutenant Colonel Lascelles to exclude me from the mess, which was communicated to me by the following letter without assigning any reason for such act. Deadwood. 23rd of June. Dear sir, as commanding officer of the 66th Regiment, I beg leave to inform you that I feel it expedient on my part to say that I cannot any longer allow you to be an honorary member of the 66th Mass. I am, dear sir, your obedient servant, Colonel LaSalle's. Barry O'Meara Esquire, be desirous of obtaining every authentic information to establish the fact that this new outrage had been effected by the orders of Sir Hudson Lowe. I waited upon Sir George Bingham, by whom I was very politely received and informed that he had been commanded to carry into execution the above order. 25th sent the following letter to the Deadwood camp. To the officers of the 66th Regiment, gentlemen, in consequence of the extraordinary mission which I accepted, having been detached from that branch of the service to which I belong, the officers of the 53rd Regiment, taking into consideration the isolated situation in which I was placed, were pleased to do me the honor of electing me an honorary member of their mess, 
in which I continued as long as the regiment remained in the island. You gentlemen, shortly after your arrival, condescended to confer upon me a similar honor, by which I have benefited for nearly a year by a fatality, which at this moment persecutes me. Orders emanating from a superior power prohibit me from any longer enjoying in your society the great, the only consolation it was possible for me to experience in this dreary abode. I cannot, however, return to my solitude without returning my most sincere thanks to you for the many marks of friendship and kindness which you have honored me and to assure you that the esteem, respect, and gratitude which I bear to you individually and collectively are indelibly engraved upon the heart of one who at his last moments will exult in saying that he was deemed worthy a seat at your table. I have the honor to be gentlemen with the greatest respect, your most obliged friend, Barry E. O'Meara, Surgeon Royal Navy. Longwood. 25th June, 1818, 26th. The officers of the 63rd Regiment were pleased to return the following reply. Dadwood, 26th June, 1818. Dear sir, as president last night, I had the honor of communicating to the mess the contents of your letter of the 25th instant and have directed by the commanding officer and officers composing it to say it is with much regret they hear of your departure as an honorary member of the mess, and assure you they always conceived your conduct while with them to be perfectly consistent with every respect with that of a gentleman. I am also directed to say the mess feel much indebted for the very flattering expressions of esteem contained in your letter, and have the honor to be, dear sir, your very humble servant, McCarthy, Lieutenant 67th Regiment. To Barry O'Meara, Esquire, Surgeon R.N. Longwood, 27th. Napoleon, much affected by his severe Kataro affection caused by the extreme humidity of his rooms, discontinued some of the remedies he was taking and reported the state of his health to the governor. July 15th, several cases of wine sent by Princess Borghese through Lady Holland arrived last month. A few were sent to Longwood, and the remainder deposited in the government stores by order of Sir Hudson Lowe. Napoleon expressed on this, as well as on many other occasions, sentiments of great affectation towards the Princess Pauline, and declared his conviction that no sacrifice would be too great for her to make for his benefit, adding that he had no doubt she would endeavor to obtain permission to come out to St. Helena. He also spoke of the Princess Hortense in very high terms, whom he pronounced to be a lady possessed of very superior talents. Likewise, of the Princess Eliza, he expressed in a very handsome manner his sense of the attention and kindness manifested for him and the misfortunes by Lady Holland, at a time when he was abandoned by many, from whose gratitude he had reason to expect some little notice, he observed that the members of the family of the great fox abounded in liberal and generous sentiments. The 20th went to town and tried to procure a copy of the observations on Lord Bathurst's speech, some of which I was informed had arrived on the island, Captain Bunn of the Mangles, to whom I applied for one, professed his surprise that such an application should be made from a person belonging to Longwood. For immediately after his arrival, Sir Hudson Lowe and Sir Thomas Reed had taken five copies of the pamphlet from him. Assigning as a reason for taking so many that they wanted to send two or three to Longwood, he added that those two persons had been very particular in requiring him to render an account of the books that he had brought out and had possessed themselves of all the modern publications on political subjects, making a demand for all the copies in the Edinburgh Review he might have brought with him, the 25th, after having paid a professional visit to Napoleon, whose malady was by no means altered for the better. And while entering my room at about half past four o'clock, Captain Blakeney delivered me the following letter, Plantation House. July 25th, 1818. Sir, I am directed by Lieutenant General Sir Hudson Lowe to inform you that by an instruction received from Earl Bathurst, dated the 16th of May, 1818, he has been directed to withdraw you from your attendance upon General Bonaparte and to interdict you all further interviews with the inhabitants at Logwood. Rear Admiral Plampin has received instruction from the Lords Commissioners of the Admiralty as to your destination when you quit this island. You are in consequence to leave Logwood immediately after receiving this letter without holding any further communication whatsoever with the persons residing there. 
Edward Wynyard, Lieutenant Colonel, Military Secretary. Humanity, the duties of my profession, and the actual state of Napoleon's health alike forbade a compliance with this unfeeling command, especially as my situation was of a civil nature, similar to other naval officers in the employ of the exercise or customs, my resolution was adopted in a moment. I determined to disobey it, whatever might be the consequences. Napoleon's health required that I should prescribe for him a regimen and prepare the medicines which it would be necessary for him to take in the absence of a surgeon, an absence likely to be of long duration, as I was perfectly sure he would accept of none recommended by Sir Hudson Lowe. I accordingly went instantly to Napoleon's apartment. Having obtained admission, I communicated to him the order which I had received. Les crimes se consommera plus vite. The crime will be committed more quickly, said Napoleon. I have lived too long for them. Votre ministère est bien hardi. Added he, when the Pope was in France, sooner would I have cut off my right arm than have signed an order for the removal of his surgeon. After some conversation had taken place, and I had given him such medical instructions as I could upon the sudden, Napoleon said, when you arrive in Europe, you will either go yourself or send to my brother Joseph. You will inform him that I desire he shall give to you the parcel containing the private and confidential letters of the emperors Alexander and Francis, the king of Prussia, and the other sovereigns of Europe with me, which I delivered to his care at Rochefort. You will publish them to couvrir de honte to cover and shame those sovereigns and manifest to the world the abject homage which those vassals paid to me when asking favors or supplicating for their thrones when I was strong and in power. Ils prigueront ma protection et l'honneur de mon alliance. They fought for my protection and the honor of an alliance with me and lit the dust from under my feet. Now, in my old age, they basely oppress and take my wife and child from me. I require of you to do this. And if you see any calumnies published of me during the time that you have been with me and that you can say, I have seen with my own eyes that this is not true, contradict them. He soon after dictated to Count Bertrand the letter, an extract of which is given in another part of this work, which he signed, adding a postscript in his own handwriting and assuring me that those few words would say more to the Empress for me than if he had written pages in quarto. He then presented me with a superb snuff box and a statue of himself, desired me on my arrival in Europe to make inquiries about his family and communicate to the members of it that he did not wish that any of them should come to St. Helena to witness the miseries and humiliations under which he labored. You will express the sentiments which I preserve for them, added he. You will bear my affections to my good Louise, to my excellent mother, and to Pauline. If you see my son, embrace him for me. May he never forget that he was born a French prince. Testify to Lady Holland the sense I entertain her kindness and the esteem which I bear to her, finally endeavor to send me authentic intelligence of the manner in which my son is educated. The emperor then shook me by the hand and embraced me, saying, Adieu, O Mira, nous ne nous verrons jamais encore. Goodbye, O Mira. We will never see each other again. Be happy.